Hi, and welcome back to Dev Explaining channel. Today I'm going to talk about terminals. The company where I'm working recently did a beauty pageant for terminals called uh, Next Stop Terminal. And everybody posted their setups, then we had voting and found some winners. Uh, what, was, what was interesting for me is to see how uh, different the entries could be. And uh, then there was also some thoughts uh, that made me kind of ask questions on my own setup and how to optimize some ideas. So I wanted to share those. Uh, there will be some links in the description section. Uh, if you found something useful here, let me know in the comment section. If you like the video, show the love by uh, pressing the thumbs up button. Entry number zero is here. I wanted to include it, uh, although I know it was partly a joke, but some people really like to keep it very basic. And this is where we start with. So very uncustomized terminal, at least looking like it. Uh, there's a Windows command prompt and uh, nothing uh, special. The benefit of this is, of course, actually that you don't uh, spend any time uh, kind of fuzzing with the details and settings. And uh, whenever you get a new Windows machine, you're already very, very up to speed because it's always the same experience. But that being said, uh, there is some kind of productivity benefits on adjusting it a bit further. So let's see some of the entries where people put some effort to customizing it. So entry number one would be here. A lot of uh, developers are carrying MacBooks. So with MacBook, a very popular choice is to get set up an iTerm 2 and then some theme to up to your likings. In this case, it's minimal theme with tab bar. And then uh, ZSH shell has pretty much replaced the bash shell in popularity. And it's often kind of backed by oh my ZSH extension on top of that. That's what you see here. Uh, on top of that, we have snazzy color theme. We have pure prompt and we have Fira code font. And the result is uh, this one here. Here's a question for you. Why do developers always open the terminal and why do they like to spend time there? I'm pretty much having multiple terminals open all day when I'm working, but there would be nice IDEs that could be used instead these days. So why do we still use the terminal? If you have your own answer for this, let me know in the comment section. But for me, I feel the terminal is more precise. So I feel that terminal is uh, kind of more static. It's uh, how I've set it up. It's exactly like that. It's also a bit closer to automation, which I fondly love. So for me, when I have an IDE, it might be that the next version is feeling a bit different and things are in different places. Philosophy has changed. With Terminal, it's exactly how I set it up. Uh, an interesting observation for me is also that uh, coders tend to have, uh, they, they tend to have, everybody has very different Terminal. So it's very kind of personal feeling. There might be some something that's shared, something that's common, but the color theme, the font choice, and what kind of plugins to enhance your work you are including, that tends to change quite a lot. So let's see more terminals. This was our first entry and pretty kind of good one, looking, looking quite clean. So here we have again iTerm, but this time the theme is uh, called Groovebox. And uh, we don't have a ZSH terminal, uh, so sorry, we don't have ZSH shell, we have fish shell with Tomita prompt and oh my fish extension. And we have Tmux and uh, you can see that the screen estate has been split to four parts. So you are essentially having four terminal in one. You can take this even further as you will see in the upcoming choices as well. Here is another choice, uh, quite basic. This is close to how I like to set things up for me. We have iTerm, we have a, a ZSH, we have oh my ZSH. The theme is called Power Level 10K. You can always Google this up if you see something you like. Um, nothing special here, but one thing I wanted to emphasize here is the Git status in the prompt. It's not the kind of a unique idea. I would uh, say that pretty much like 99% of developers set it up like this, whatever they use, they like to see the Git branch and more Git information uh, all the time, at least I do. But uh, it's kind of essential and important. It's, it's, it has high kind of productivity value. Here is one special trick. So you, on the right side, you can see the, this little red one. Uh, that's the return value from last comment uh, set up. 
And what else? Good autocomplete is essential. So in this case, Git and AWS tools have been set to autocomplete. Uh, so you don't need to remember things, Google things. Uh, the terminal and, and the shell will kind of help you write your code faster. As you know, I'm a big fan of this uh, force multiplier. So using uh, great tools to be much more productive than you would be if you would write everything uh, yourself. My feeling from my everyday work in my productive environment is that I just write a little bit uh, to give the direction and then I let the tooling and intelligence to kind of take over and complete everything. So then that makes me in that sense 10x if I'm able to write 10 times less. Uh, to be honest, that's not yet 10x, but uh, compared to somebody who is not using any IntelliSense, it would already be. But most people are using these tools, so in that sense, to be 10x, you need a little bit more. I have other videos on that topic, so look them up. Um, next entry, here we have iTerm, Monokai Pro, a custom fish prompt, custom Tmux theme, and C matrix. So somebody is really, really tuning this. As you can see, I enjoy kind of 100% terminal hipster view like this. I haven't taken it this far yet, but if you have, let me know in the comments section. Let's carry onwards because here is interesting entry talking about using the screen real estate. Um, there's a comparatively small font and a lot of information on the screen. We have actually five kind of parts of the screen plus there is information at the top and in the bottom as well so this is very information heavy setup and i would never set up my screen like this let's start with that but i appreciate this because uh, there there is perfectly good reasons why you might for example if you have a single huge screen or you have excellent eyesight in those cases why not in my case my eyes are not so good anymore. I'm using glasses and, and uh, I enjoy a little bit larger font. Um, I also like to not have too much stuff on the screen because that might uh, trap me into writing too long and complicated comments that are harder to understand by others. So I actually like to have kind of a little bit less screen estate available. <clears throat> Additionally, I have multiple monitors. So I would rather, rather have... <coughs> huge font and one terminal on each monitor so that's like i would set up my my screen but i appreciate this because i know a lot of developers set their things up like this it's like the other extreme and uh, pretty pretty nicely done here in this case we have uh, multi-screen we have i3 uh, ux term in console at the font solarized theme zsh oh my zsh with modified gianu team and uh, yeah very kind of powerful and I, I would argue that this is a productivity environment just not for me but it is definitely in the right hands can be very highly productive let's carry onwards i have few more to show to you and something to learn from every one of these so the next one um, this is autocomplete git and history modules which are quite useful for multipliers presto very easy to set up and configuration save to github can save your configuration to personal dot files as well so the interesting thing here is that presto configuration is full fork of presto meaning that if the original maintainer makes changes they are not automatically uh, updated to this fork which means that <coughs> if you are concerned about security setting up these uh, uh, terminals and customizing you are often pulling other people's code and you might be automatically updating that as well. So you are pulling new versions of that to your machines and then you are trusting them to some extent at least. And the question is how much do you want to trust that? So one way to tackle security might be to do, to do that fork, whether it's oh my ZSH or Presto or what you like. You do the fork and then you freeze the version and you can inspect the current version so that you are satisfied with it and uh, then you would only be running that one without any automagic updates often the updates are not essential anyway but often coders can be lazy and they just set everything to update which means that you are constantly pulling foreign code in your machine and trusting it quite a lot especially the shell extensions have a lot of access so think about that 
I think there was something to learn here. Then we have Windows Entry, Windows Terminal. Um, we have uh, some panes and we have some tabs here. And uh, there is a combination of Windows subsystem for Linux 2 with Ubuntu installed. That's my favorite setup as well. We have Cascadia code, PL, PowerShell co core, PoshKit, oh my posh, HTOP, and uh, stuff like that. So uh, again, you can see that uh, uh, information heavy screen using, for example, a big screen. We are using the screen estate very efficiently to do many, many different things. So pretty cool setup, especially for a Windows machine. I run multiple machines. I have a MacBook and I have a Windows subsystem for Linux in, in, in a few laptops. I always end up working kind of on top of Linux or, or OS X. And then uh, I very often prefer the ZSH experience on top of that, but this is a bit different interpretation, looking pretty good, I, I would have to say. And then Finally, we have Windows Terminal with ZSH, oh my ZSH with Agnostor theme, oh my ZSH with plugins. So looking a little bit similar like before, but screen has not been split. And this is based on the ZSH experience with a lot of plugins to make you more intelligent. So AWS, Git, uh, Kubernetes, Autoload, virtual environment all taken care of. You don't see it here, but that's behind the scenes. Okay. So uh, I'm not going to tell you which one was the winner. Uh, let's uh, you, you get to make that decision for this video now. So if you have a kind of favorite here or s s similar setup than what you are using, um, you can use the comment section to let me know about that. I have one bonus entry here for you. This is not actually my productivity setup, but I have a very, very twisted sense of humor. So here is my entry. Uh, this is called cool retro term. I used to use something called console, but somehow that went away. This is not my day-to-day -day coding environment. I have to say I do enjoy things more that look like the other entries here. But uh, I actually some, somehow like this. Uh, I'm, I'm already old enough so that when I started, this was actually some kind of baseline. I started in environments like this. You will see a video on that a bit later as well. And this uh, terminal emulator is twisted because it has glitches and it has sound effects. And you can choose like terminals from 70s or 80s. And it's a lot of fun. You can still have a lot of productivity and intelligence tools set up. Uh, and this always gets giggles when I do a presentation somewhere and whip out this very old school terminal with all those effects. So it's kind of a, uh, kind of a half joke for me, but a fun joke. Uh, for working on top of this, it's best in moderate doses, so working on this for a day is kind of heavy on ice, and, and I, I, I sometimes whip this out, but I, I typically don't spend all my day looking at this kind of console. So, I hope this was entertaining, perhaps you got some new ideas uh, questioning your own setup, perhaps you have excellent reasonings why you are using terminal or why not using terminal and if you are using terminal perhaps you have something to share on how it's best set up let me know in that case as i said um, my uh, setup is typically kind of halfway so i'm not 100 percent hipster i don't set up everything it's kind of I, I set up some essentials but i do like to dabble with themes and fonts uh, and I have a lot of intelligence to keep me productive. And whether I have a MacBook or Windows uh, subsystem for Linux, I end up with a ZSH and oh my ZSH on top of that. So that's typically my, my uh, setup pretty much. But I don't kind of go that extra mile and, and uh, go crazy with the terminal. Mm, I have other areas to go crazy as well. So I, I would say I'm like 50% terminal hipster, not 100%. But productivity is very important for me. So I hope you enjoyed this one. See you in the next video. Bye bye.